Yes, Melinda, that is Lil Saint. That is the wannabe Lil Saint. Oh, I forgot he answered the call. <coughs> but no, what we can do is, uh, since, you know, it's already recording, I can just, you know, be like something like, hey guys, it's Die Hard from the Power Plant. I'm going to have a little sit down here with LG Lil Saint, the, uh, the self-proclaimed guru of swag. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's you. So, uh. I guess to start things off here, Saint, you know, I've known you for quite a while. You know, I've it's been like a year, I think, somewhere in there, something yeah, like that. Yeah, runner. Going on too, yeah. And for a while there, you were like the jobber of the power plant. So? <laughs> but that's not about him jobbing in the power plant. Now, in your honest opinion, I just want to know, what do you think of the power plant? Honest opinion, let's see. Pull no punches, young sir. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you how I feel. Let's okay. see. Um, it's a great, I mean, great league. I have to say, yeah, because I was in there, and um, I don't go to sloppy leagues. Um, and y'all definitely picked up with y'all storylines. You know, when I was there, it was more cut and dry matches, and there's only like the main event storylines. But y'all have got better, and I like that. And I watch, I watch every show. Even though I might not comment, I watch every show. May skip a few, you know, whatever. See what y'all doing with the storylines. But yeah, it's a great league. Y'all could rival with FAM one day. Oh well, speaking of FAM, what do you think of FAM? Hmm. FAM. Fucking a monkey. Now I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> FAM. Um, like um, it's a good league. I watch it. It's very entertaining. But on some levels, like, maybe, like, when I start watching it, it got predictable more as I watched it. So, I will only, like, the matches that I'll watch is, like, the main event and whoever is my friend. That's the only matches I'll watch. Oh, and K2N's matches on there. But he's, I don't think he's in there no more. So, yeah. All right, well, that makes sense. Now, speaking of of the bigger leagues, um, what do you think of TXW? Bullshit. <laughs> um, overrated comes to mind. I'm not saying that, you know, it's a bad league. Don't get me wrong. It's it's a league that is great. It got the subscribers, got, you know, boosted up or whatever. But in my honest opinion... They are overrated simply because when they first started out, I liked how it was going. Now it's like WWE. WWE can put on whatever material they want to put on because they have no rivals. Or the competition that they do have, they know it won't compete. So if they get some rivalries and start worrying about drama, cough, cough, <laughs> then you... You would be a so much better league. Like I watch some shows, but see, I'll I'll admit to I I've you know periodically, you know like I I don't watch the full show, but I've watched you know bits and pieces. And my thing is is I just personally I don't like Silvera as a commentator. I don't think he's got, you know I mean anybody can say oh my god you know anybody can do that. I just for me I just I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> but like mm, uh, the ECW commentary. <laughs> Well, like, I know I know you might have a little, like, uh, okay, here's another league. And this one might be a, 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 um, a sensitive subject right now. But I, I, yep. I got to be the one to ask it. What do you think of ice? Ice. Ice, ice, baby. No, I'm just one. But um, ice, uh, I mean, I like it simply because one person in there and... I'm pretty sure you know who it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Not going to say no names, but I like it because of him, and that's why I started watching it. But like I said, it's like almost like TXW. Like, they're not putting up, you know, when I watch their matches, I get drowsy. Not trying to say it's a bad performance, but some of their, you know, members is not telling the story in the ring. Don't get me wrong. I don't put on the best matches either. But when I watch a match and I watch a league of that cal caliber, I expect, you know, at least some good matches. At least three out of five. 
All right. Well, so. I guess three out of five isn't, you know, that's pretty good ratio, I guess. I mean, that's still 60%. So, you know. Not passing in my book, but okay. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm sure that you know there are plenty of, uh, you know, plenty of leagues and feds out there. I mean, plenty. Plenty to choose from. Too much. Yes, definitely too many. A lot of startup ones that just don't seem to get off the ground. Now, my my thing, my one of my questions is, I I've been eager to ask this, and I know I know part of the answer because I didn't sign up for it, but I gotta ask about the King of the Ring, because <laughs> you know I did post on the video and I did say, um, you know, if I would have been in it, I would win the whole thing. You know, and from what I've been seeing of the uh, the King of the Ring matches, you know, they were pretty competitive. Yeah, and they look pretty cutthroat. And I, what my, I guess my main question is, is who do you, aside from who actually won it, who do you think should have won it, or who would you have been pulling for to win it? Okay, little spoiler alert: if you haven't watched it already, well, I haven't put up all the videos, so that's kind of my bad. But a little spoiler alert: I don't know if I should do it or should not do it. But well, what we'll do is, of, if it, hold on a second, Saint. What we'll do, this is a spoiler alert, so if you don't want to hear this part, just uh, I'll put the time marker in there for you to skip to that time marker. Now you can start. Okay. The final match was Leon versus OTP. I'm not going to spoil that match because I actually want to watch it. I, I actually want y'all to watch it, and it's a great match. I might just put that out and just skip the tournament or whatever. But, um... Besides them two, who I would like to see, you know, give it 100%, is out of Enigma and Rambo Panda. Simply because Rambo Panda gives a whole lot of slack, you know, and he's a good competitor. People may say he's cheap or whatever, but he still gets the, gets the job done in the ring. Now, Enigma is very underrated. Like, uh, me and Enigma can have classic matches. And... Just to say, the match where he got eliminated from, we're just going to say that um, Jobber comes to mind. And I don't know if it was an off game or whatever, but he just got jobbed in under eight minutes. So well, That's a that's tough, that's a tough loss for him, I, I guess. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, with Rambo... With, with Rambo Panda, I almost called him <clears throat> called him Rainbow Panda there for a second, but uh, <laughs> I our our issue was stemmed from when 2011 first came out. He was doing a a King of the Ring type thing, like a mini one, and uh, it was off of the IGN boards. And I signed up for it, <clears throat> and it was right about the time when Black Ops was coming out, and he was on Black mm-hmm. Ops like every freaking day, you know, and. So I ended up telling him, I was like, you know what, just tell everybody you beat me. I just, I can't wait around anymore. You know, I waited for like four days straight for this guy to get on SmackDown. And that was the whole, that's what that stemmed from. That's why I'm assuming he doesn't like me. Now, I know that you were in AOW for a while, much like Leon, who has, you know, disappeared. And, you know, Rambo Panda was in AOW. <laughs> got kicked out by everybody. Oh, sorry. Exactly. I mean, he he got a unan and a very unfriendly, unanimous ass kicking out the door. <laughs> yeah, right. right everybody. After, right after he voted no <laughs> for me in my tryout in AOW, which I can understand because I got a lot of haters, but I think you have more because you're the guru of swag. And no, you know. when I was saying guru of swag, I was you know holding the uh, quotation marks with my hands. Keep that in mind. He may think he's the guru of swag. I do not think he is the guru of swag. <laughs> only because he only puts his little camo design on his trunks. And, well, I'm not saying that's not impressive. It's very impressive. Well, sort of. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Also, um, one other thing or another question I wanted to ask you. Um, I don't know if you saw the video on uh, YouTube or not, but... Uh, somebody had uploaded an online match that they played on 12. And, uh, you know, I can understand the no lag thing, but from what I saw, mm-hmm. it's going to be a whole nother run spamming situation in the online series. I mean, it's horrible. Okay, let me talk about that real quick. My little input into that. I already knew as soon as they said we can break up moves, the tag team matches are gone. Like, oh, yeah. gone. Noobs are going to take over that, and online, it's horrible. Okay, but 
the run, as long as we have stamina and all that other stuff or whatever, it's going to get minimized, but it's still going to be running. And you have to think about it because they don't want to take out the running simply because it's lightweights and whatever. And I understand that that because I'm a lightweight myself. But people like you, Die Hard, and stuff like that, it's going to be difficult, even though you're a reversing fiend, so <laughs> they run it, whatever. I still think that WWE 12 is going to be a good game against friends. Yeah. I'm not going to say against news because that's to be announced until tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. So, And then uh, another thing that I wanted to touch on. Um, back uh, For some people that didn't know, back when Lil Saint was in the power plant, which you know was in 2010 and at the beginning of 2011 there. Um, but as much as, I don't know, we may get some negative criticism for this one. But <laughs> the Rebel... 426. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't like the Rebel. I understand that. But the Rebel was in the power plant. And, you know, originally it was Lil Saint that got the Rebel to join the power plant. Just a little bit of FYI for everybody. They used to be they used to be friends. How do you explain that? <laughs> How are you friends with the most hated player on SmackDown? I mean, I'm still cool with the Rebel. I don't... I, I see beyond the hate, so... Okay... Me and Rebel are no longer friends, so, yeah. And back at that time, it was kind of funny because I did not let people choose who my friends were. That's why, one, I bought my friends list so nobody can see it but me because it's not for y'all. It's not called your friends' <laughs> friends list. It's called my friend list, so, you know, I bought that. But on to Rebel, he was a cool dude. Don't get me wrong, I caught him in some lies, but, you know, who doesn't lie? Yeah. So... Except for me. You know, I don't lie. You're diehard. Shut up. Now, anyway, Rebel, good competitor. He taught me a few things, you know, whatever. I knew it was some iffy things about him, but I didn't care because we were so cool. And, you know, I started talking to him, you know, cooling in on the phone, chilling, whatever, you know, acting like we're real, real life friends. And it got to that point, And then one day, it broke down in a match with me and OTP versus him and some guy named War God. Mm-hmm. Well, he changed his name now. Uh, I'm War pretty God sure he was, changes uh, every week. Um, he is also known as TLW Blood King or whatever. And I knew War God from uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 2007 on the PS2. <laughs> long, long history with me and him. Um, another very important thing I wanted to touch on, and this is... This is at every league owner out there because evidently people don't listen to me when I tell it to them. So I just want somebody else's opinion on this subject. Now, let's say, let's say the rebel, or oh, yeah, okay, we'll use the rebel as an example. Let's say the rebel is looking for a league to join. Let's say he doesn't have all the hate he gets from everybody. People don't hate him or whatever. They don't really know who he is. Let's say he joins ROV. Okay. Now. Mm-hmm. If you were running ROV, would you tell Rebel it's okay for him to be in another league as well as being in ROV? Or would you tell him he can only be exclusive to one league? Ooh, okay. I'm kind of unbiased towards this because, you know, people, they have their rules for a specific reason. Maybe because they feel like it's going to be competitive between those two leagues. But then again... It can help both of the leagues if you have the same person because what maybe one league is thriving, you know, having over 500 subscribers and the other one has 39. And having the similarity people, you know, you can boost up their ratings and then maybe you can do an invasion and you just build both of them up. I mean... I just see it as you're supposed to help leagues so you can put on the best shows for the fans. You don't have to be the only league putting on the best show for the fans. I'm I'm just saying. See, People I, have their, you know, feelings. So, and I, I, I completely agree with that because I believe that everybody, I mean, if you're shelling out the $60 for the game, you shell out the at least $150 for your Xbox, you know, whatever else, you know, you got. If, if you paid the money for your game, you deserve the right to, you know, be able to play with, whoever you want to play with. And that touches on a lot of, you know, current subjects and past subjects of the league situation. And 
that's the one thing that's keeping the league situation in such a bad light is because so many leagues try to compete with each other for, you know, for viewers. And it's like, like you were saying, you know, the one league that has 39 viewers, you know, those could be 39 viewers that that league that 500 has. That could be 39 subscribers that that other league just doesn't have, and they could get those if it would just be a little bit of unity. Yeah. And See, uh, so, do you have any questions for me, little saint? Ooh, who flipped the script? No, this one. But um, let's see, let's see. Do I have a question for you? Okay, quick question. I know that this is kind of a touchy subject, but you asked me a touchy subject, so I guess I can ask you a touchy subject. Okay. You and Styles. <laughs> yeah. How did that all, you know, from the beginning up until the firing, what's that little story about? Well, do you want the, like, the absolute beginning, like, back in the day beginning, or do you want the Xbox 360 beginning? The beginning, the full beginning, how y'all met up until, you know, the firing. <laughs> all right, I met, I met J2 Styles on SmackDown vs. Raw 2007 on the PS2. I met him through P.O.D. King Leader, and at the time his name was not J2 Styles, it was 925 Styles. Everybody called him a jocker and a name stealer because um, he's known as Styles with a Z on the PS3, but his name was BZD Styles uh, ZDB, and... Like, that Styles was just phenomenal, and the Styles that I knew was not the same person. And, I mean, he was a cool guy. We'd chit-chat on the phone. You know, we'd all be in matches. We didn't have headsets on the PS2, so we'd all sit there and on our cell phone in, like, these 10-person calls. And uh, I was in Caw at the time. I had just got traded from Raw to SmackDown. Like, I had, whoop ass was fed up with me. Uh, me and whoop ass were really going at it, like, verbally. And uh, so they whoop were like, yeah, yeah, whoop ass 2K10. Runs a UWF on the PS3 side. I, I know I said I'd never give him another shout-out, but I just gave him some free publicity again, somehow. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so Styles was – he came to me, and he's like, well, hey, dude, how do I get into car? And I was like, well, I was like, your best bet, you know, uh, talk to Kiros or Troy. That, that's Kiros' real name, but talk to Troy or Josh, who was the other Styles. Well, they said, you know, we had like, I think, 20 guys on the SmackDown roster at the time, and Raw had like 10 so they were like, well, hey, we'll put you on Raw. Well, Whoop Ass didn't like Styles because Styles is. I'm not saying that Styles is racist. I'm not saying that. But he does have the mentality of he's white, so he's better. And if you know Whoop Ass, you know Whoop Ass is black. Which I'm okay with. I'm an equal opportunity hater. I hate everybody of every. Equally? Yeah, exactly. I'm an equal opportunity hater. But yeah, so. Whoop ass told me, he was like, you're not good enough for, for Ka. Well, it kind of got proven when Styles kept getting his ass handed to him by everybody. Well, then Styles was running around with some real lame ass dude named Ipoke. And uh, the re the first time me and Styles got into a really big fight, like me and Styles were cool throughout the whole Ka thing when he was getting his ass handed to him and stuff. I was like, you know, just do this and do this and you'll get better. But he had traded the, the hack Ka I had made. Like I made a lair hack Ka. He had the, a hacked entrance and like two pairs of gloves and he had hacked facial hair like hair that wasn't accessible in the game and he traded it to the cheapest player to ever have graced like the smackdown series which mexican pride 13 dude you've got nothing on ipoke i'll tell you that right now you got nothing on that guy but yeah so <laughs> he traded that and i got so pissed off at styles you know i was cussed i called him up on himself when i was just cussing him out and i was like oh you piece of shit you know i hate you i can't stand you and so we lost touch for a little bit, and uh, he contacted me on Facebook, and he was like, hey, he's like, I'm getting a 360, and you know, at the time I was running the power plant, and he said he'd, mm -hmm. he'd, he wanted to join the power plant. Well, you fought Styles, uh, you know, and Kieran's fought Styles, and he got his ass kicked by you, and he, of course he blamed it on the kip-up finisher, which is complete bullshit, because he had, he had used his kip-up at the same time. It's, yeah. not, it's not your fault that he can't kick out, you know? And so <laughs> he fought, um, let's see, yeah, he fought Zack Samararo, lost to Zack Samararo, went through a flaming table. Nobody got to see that at bragging rights, but it looked sick. It was a totally <laughs> accidental setup, but it looked amazingly awesome. And then uh, 
he he said he was selling his Xbox, and he said he wanted to have a retirement match against me. He said he wanted to, you know, go out with a bang. So, you know, I uploaded that hour, I think it was like an hour and a half, or like an hour and 20 minutes long or whatever. You know, and I gave commentary on the whole match. And then he turns around and he does another match with Leon after he said he had officially retired, which I'm not mad about that. I mean, to all on his own or whatever. But then Leon totally schools him. Leon didn't care about making him look good. Leon just wanted to whip his ass, which is fine. And Leon <laughs> really did whip his ass pretty bad. So Styles is, you know, he's just incognito at this time. Nobody's heard from him. I, I you know, I'd text him once in a while and stuff, and we'd chit chat. And he'd be like, "Oh yeah, dude, you're like my brother," and this and that. And then he's like, "I think I'm gonna get another 360. I'm gonna come back." And I was like, "Well, okay." And at the time, you know, it was right after we had like we. The way that Saint got let go from the power plant was a very unjust way. I will I will say that only because we seriously downsized our roster, and he was one of those names that just got drew. And I I don't agree with it because to this day, if you were still in the power plant, I have a feeling that you probably would have had quite a bit more gold around your waist. But uh, I was the hardcore champion, by the way. Exactly, he's he was the last hardcore champion in the power plant. Just a little bit of an FYI. <laughs> but yeah, so Styles was all like, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna come back, and I was like, okay, well, we'll we'll do this whole build thing up towards SummerSlam. So he comes back, and those first couple of weeks, yeah, it was he was pretty good at it, you know, with the promos and stuff. He was really biting off the Rock, you know, because the Rock had made his return to Raw and all that stuff, and he was ripping into John Cena. He called me old, mm-hmm. and the diehard character is old, but I'm like physically not old. I'm pretty young. But Styles is he's an old man. He's like thirty. And so <laughs> oh. we we scheduled up our match for SummerSlam and I told him I would drop the title to him at SummerSlam. I would I said I would make him the T P P champion. But when I told him that I was like, But I'm not gonna job to you after that. So then we fast forward a little bit, um, after SummerSlam there. He was running the show. I, I was taking some personal time off. Uh, him and Zach Samararo were kind of going back and forth, and he was going back and forth with a lot of guys from the UK. So we let go of all the guys from the UK. He brought in one guy from the UK who is still on the roster, which one of the best acquisitions I think we've ever made, and that's AC Arthur. He's one of the coolest, most reliable guys I think we've ever had in the power plant. But Styles was so hell-bent on building such a great promo prior to the No Mercy situation which this is, it's not a spoiler anymore because, you know, the video's been out there for a few weeks, but a lot of people just kind of got the, the tidbits and the hearsay of what happened. And what really happened was the first match was a work, the second match was a work, and in the third match he had said he wanted to go all out. And if you tell me you want to go all out, then, you know, I definitely turn up the trouble and I really, you know, lay the smack down, so to say. you know, so to candy speak. ass. Exactly, <laughs> and so he got pissed. And if if you would have, if you people would have been in the party when we were in the match, like you would have been laughing at Styles. I mean, he was literally complaining like a thirteen-year-old kid, you know. And both me and him are supposed to be grown-ass men. And I told him, I was like, dude, it's just entertainment. I was like, it's not like you won't get another title match, you know. And so I picked him up from a more than enough finishers. You know, I don't expect anybody to watch the entire. The, the entire pay-per-view. No Mercy was probably one of the worst pay-per-views we have ever done. I and I will. It, it it ranks right up there with the main event of Collision, you know, because that was our WrestleMania and it was eight minutes long. How the hell is the Power Plant Championship match eight minutes long? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. <Good> job. <laughs> but yeah. So Styles and me, you know, we had our little fallout from that match, and what happened was, is Styles disconnected on the ten count in the Last Man Standing match. Now. I think I did a really good job of editing out the disconnect in the video. Like, it really looked fluid like he didn't disconnect, but he did disconnect. If you watch the video real close, you can quick see his bar show up saying that he disconnected, and then it quick <laughs> disappears, and it cuts to where it shows Die Hard kind of slouched over, raising his hand. And that's the thing. I mean, Styles just, he totally killed me when he did that because he was sending me text messages saying we're like family, we're like brothers and this and that, we're so close and he would never fuck the power plant over and he said he'd never fuck me over and bam, what does he do? First first opportunity he gets when he loses, he throws a bitch fit about it. And that's one thing I can't well, tolerate. I can't stand bitching. It drives me crazy. Hmm. 
Well, I'm going to get back on the power plant real quick because this happens to deal with Styles. <laughs> you know that he hit me up on the video showing all the contenders for the King of the Ring. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, why you didn't let me in, blah, blah, blah. And more bitching. Like you said, he's a bitcher. He is. And it pissed me off to the point that when I did have, you know, a spot open because somebody disc got scratched or broken, I was either looking at you or Styles. Well, you wasn't on at the time. Styles was. Forget it. <laughs> let the other dude go in. Let another guy go in. He lost, but, you know, whatever. And goes on with the tournament. So, Styles, Bitcher, equals, in the middle. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, Styles, like, he he, wa- he wants the attention on him, but then if the attention's on somebody else, he says that they're, a, like, Styles called me a spotlight hog. And I look at it like this. I made the power plant. I conceived the idea for the power plant. So, you know, I think I have a little bit of entitlement to be a little bit of a spotlight hog. I I try to build everybody equally. I don't build anybody and then swipe them under the rug. I give everybody an equal opportunity at some point in time. I'm sure <laughs> you were destined down the road if you would have still been in the power plant. You would have got a shot at the power plant championship. And with Styles, you know, I basically put him right to the front of the line in front of everybody else. Big and I made him the champion. The <laughs> you know, I made him the champion. <laughs> so then he was saying yeah. about being the paper champion... You know, and you know what? Styles was a paper champion. And I can say that in honesty. It looked good know? on paper? Yeah, it looked good on paper when you see the name Styles there. But, I mean, really, his character had a, a, a kind of, not even a flashy look, but he had a, a good physical look about his character, but that was about it. I mean, what else did... Batista. This, it wasn't even like Batista. It's just he had the extremely large traps and, like, the wannabe rock body build and... But other than that, what else did Styles really offer the power plant? I mean, he said, and I quote, I'm, I'm remembering this from my text messages, but he had said that without him in the power plant that we would have you know, no good storylines and that he created controversy when he was on commentary. He created this, he created that. The only thing he created on controversy was more headaches and more people pissed off because there was less play-by-play. Ever since... Uh, Wes Steele, kayfabe, Wes Steele, and Christopher Billings have been on commentary. There's been a lot more play-by-play, and I'm getting more positive feedback from the show. Hmm. So, I mean, what did Styles really bring to the table? He was like, he's like an American version of Alan Sive, right? <laughs> Nothing. No, that's fine. Or wait, 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 like an American version of Kieran. And I'm not saying that Kieran wasn't a good player at some point in time, but... Kieran was just like that one-hit wonder. He's like that song that you hear <laughs> once on the radio, you never hear it again. You never hear from that band yeah. or anybody ever again. Get strong, got on crack, goes to jail. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they sell a couple of records, they think they're millionaires. Now, mm-hmm. one thing I want to ask you. when you, What do you think of simulation leagues? Ah. Uh. Well, I have my own opinion about simulation. Like, are you talking about simulation like selling or oh, yeah, straight up hardcore, you already know who's going to win? Straight up hardcore simming, you know who's going to win, you know, spot calling, the whole nine yards. Okay. There's, I have a problem with it. <clears throat> Simply because, I'm not saying because, you know, AOW, great league. I love watching it. WWE, you already know. But anyway, leagues that you already know who's going to win – you're not giving everybody a shot based off, you know, their in-ring talent or whatever you want to call it. You're giving them looks on, like, who will look better as a champion. Or you're giving somebody else a shot. That's pretty much the only downfall that I see with that because you can be great. And I mean great in the ring. Your call has some flaws to it, but you're not getting a shot just because your call doesn't look the part. Like, Nick Virtue, I'm just throwing his name out here because he's cool. Nick Virtue, great. He looks great. He's good in ring. He can sell a match to perfection. Let's say if I had Nick Virtue on my, you know, roster, he looked great. Let's say that Nick Virtue did, you know, wasn't good. And I put him in the main event. 
and, you know, he's selling great, and it looks good. I don't have no problem with that. But if you put somebody in a main event and they try to sell and they really can't, then, you know, that's I have a problem with it because it's taken away from the the realistic and the fans loving it type aspect of the whole situation. That's very true. That's very, very true. And, I mean, that's why, like, with the power plant, I'm not saying – that we are strictly competitive, and I'm not saying that we completely sim. We mix and match both, and I know a lot of people say you can't do both, but we seem to make it work, and I guess ultimately that's you know, our entertainment kind of angle for everything. But, I mean, there's so many good startup leagues that could be so great, and you know, I think that ROV is going to be a real good league along the line. Um, I just definitely mm-hmm. Enigma needs to start getting some people in check. Yeah, and I'll talk to him if he wants me to be co-leader. You know, I, I would on the weekends when I am here, I send me the problem, or I don't have to be the co-leader. Make me the enforcer. I don't have to be that in the storyline wise, but in like parties, if somebody gets out of line, somebody's leaving, somebody's quitting, let me talk to him because I will get them. To see it my way. <laughs> and if you ever see me mad, you would know that I will get my way. Well, like, my point thing point. is, is, I mean, if somebody's going to leave a league, I mean, at least, you know, let somebody, like, give the pr- give the league owner a chance to let it sink in. At least give them a good reason why you're just up and leaving. I mean, if you don't like the way your character is being portrayed, then let it be known. You know, this way, at least the league owner, is, if they're at least semi-intelligent, you know, they will, you know, be like, okay, well, next time I won't treat a superstar like that or whatever. Yeah. Um, but that's the biggest pet peeve for anybody that's in a league. I mean, if you if you don't like where you're at, voice your opinion. I mean, that's... Yeah, I'm t- especially kids, because yeah. kids get pushed over a lot in leagues, and they be having some of the best looking, best talented, best talented calls, and they get pushed over simply because they're kids and they're young and they can't voice their opinion. That's why I voice my opinion. That's why I hang out with kids so much. So if they say something, and something goes down where what they're saying, I can back the dude up because he's not going to stick up half as much as. Me or you or anybody else over the age of 17, 18, 21 would stick up for themselves. So, well, exactly. Whatever. I mean, like, we, I've had my share of, you know, hotheads that were younger kids. I mean, like Sam Mysterio, I mean, that kid was like 11. But as much as he would get oh, hot headed, he'd what? never, you know, stand up for himself, you know, and that's just one thing. I mean, I see it so it happens so many times, too. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, there's definitely a lot of good players in the mix of all the noobs online, but the real good players are typically a lot younger because their hands can move faster. You know, when you get older, you you're, yeah. you get arthritis, and I'm not saying I have arthritis. Mm-hmm. Don't think that Die Hard has arthritis because I don't. But I'm just saying when I wake up in the morning, my back hurts, my legs hurt, my hands hurt. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm sore. I don't think he'll morning. be playing the game if his back hurts. <laughs> well, well, yeah, exactly. If I'm not playing, if I'm not on my Xbox, it usually means I'm either at work or I'm, you know, sitting in my chair trying to make my back not hurt. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, I, I, have a, uh, I, I am in some real pain. Like, everybody thinks it's just storyline. I got some really bad knees in real life. Like, it, like when I go to bed at night, I lay in bed and I can feel the pain, like, in both of my knees. I can feel it. Well, that's I, how I am with my back. I got back problems in my family, so. Well, we know why you got Whatever. back problems, so you do a lot of bending over. Oh, racist! <laughs> that had nothing to do with race. Nothing to do with. Hey, I'm taking it as cotton joke. I'm that's, taking it as a cotton joke. Not even a cotton <laughs> joke. <laughs> I'm taking it. That's how I'm taking it. Racist. If you're black, thumb down this video. Yes, if you're. No, if, you, if you are African American. Thumb down my video. But if you're Puerto Rican, thumb it up, though. <laughs> you know, just because. For all my nick. No, this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because, uh, you know, I, I love my calls at work I get for, like, Puerto Rico. Because, yeah, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Because I can't speak shit for Spanish. And uh, 
a lot of them speak horrible English, so it's definitely, definitely a, quite an uphill battle for me at work. But on the more yeah. important things, you know, because my real-life job isn't nearly as important as my power plant job. But yes, uh-huh. take this, people, and listen. Unity is what we all need. All the league people need unity. I mean, I'm more than willing to give somebody a shout-out in a video or let them be featured on the power plant. If that if that's going to help you along the way, fine. I mean, why do you think I've been showing AOW guys on the power plant? It's not just because by association it's because i want to help them get known because of the 200 subscribers or like 230 we've got i want those 230 people to be turned on to aow to rov to to everybody even with as much as i don't like txw i want everybody turned on to it just i want people to realize that good things can happen from video games that people don't just die because of video games i'm just saying yeah now this one (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's not true, because back in, like, 99, you know, there was the Columbine shootings and everything, and they based that off of yeah. Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails and the Quake video game, which most of you kids that are watching this probably have no idea what the Quake game was about. <laughs> I remember playing it when it first came out, though. And it's just shows you <laughs> I bet you do. I, it shows you how old I am, if I can still remember playing yeah. it, beating it. But, <laughs> but, yeah, so Unity is the key. That is how people will salvage, you know, themselves, I guess. And this year is definitely going to be an uphill struggle on 2012. Hopefully. I like a struggle. I don't. <laughs> I mean, I, from what I saw in that online match, it was a, it was a very um, stationary camera for the most part, other than when certain moves happen, yeah. which I don't like because it was like the tag team match camera angle and it didn't zoom in on moves. So I kind of bummed ah. about that. I'm actually really bummed about that. But anyways, our, our call's getting to like 40 minutes. You know that, right? Uh, yeah, I see that. Hold on. Let me ask you one more question because this okay. has been blowing up. Sorry, Mom. i got to call you back. But anyway, um, quick question. Uh-huh. Okay. The Kamikaze ver- in Darius Dar- Kaiser versus Nick Virtue, do they look alike? That's all I want to know real quick. Uh... <laughs> I have a, uh, I have an interesting point of view on this, I guess, because I mean, I do believe that Darius Kaid's kind of jocked the look a little bit. I mean, there's a lot of similarities, but then again, a lot of people have been using the the custom skin tone, you know, especially when Nick started using it, and Nick really got really big on YouTube because of the custom skin tones, you know, and everybody wanted to know how he did it, and. But yeah, I mean, in a sense, I mean, they're similar, but they're different at the same time. Darius Kites is, you know, he's he's bigger. His hair is thicker blacker. and blacker. Mm. <laughs> and he doesn't have the same sideburn fade that Nick has. Like Nick's uh, custom paint tool, you know, it's got the sideburn etched in kind of like with the uh, kind of deep fade, like how, he, how his hair actually is. So, I mean, I don't know. They look similar, but not completely similar. That's that's a tough one. You know, it's like yes and no at the same time. That's for another call, I guess, or another interview. Oh, no, that is uh that's my house phone. Oh, no, I'm just saying like that subject is for another interview. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um what I'm going to do is we're going to cut the short or actually I'm just going to play some music so you can just entertain them for a few seconds Saint, cuz I got a phone call on my home phone. So give okay. me just a minute. All right. So, yeah, to you, the viewers, do uh, obviously you like the power plant because you're watching this. So if anything that you could change about the power plant or improve for the power plant, what would it be? And not only that, for any league that you see, you know, whatever, could it be something that you change? And. Not only leagues, clans, like, could you change something for that? Because clans and leagues are starting to be one now, you know, being the same. So, what could you change about that? And would you like to see Little Saint in the power plant? Put that down in there. And if you don't know me, my I'm pretty sure my YouTube channel will 
be down in the description also. So yeah. I why think would this calls I, in like forty minutes. Why would I why would I put your YouTube link in my video description? I don't care about you. I'm doing this for the views. Because I'm doing an interview. But I'm doing it for I'm the doing views. An interview. I'm doing it for the views. I don't okay. care about your your popularity. I care about my popularity. Remember, I'm a dick. You get your popularity. You get your popularity when they look at the video. <laughs> but yes, I will put a link. Dis- or, wow, uh, I will put a link to Saints <laughs> channel in the video description. Totally made me mess that yeah. up. But all right, you said folks, it right. This is that uh, the the black guy on the other side there. That that's little Saint. If you could see his his Racist. super ugly picture on Skype, it would be great because it makes me raffle, raffle cakes. But anyways, really? just you know, like you said, you know, comment, you know, what you would like to see, you know, clans, leagues, feds, all the work. Because like you said, they are basically becoming one. I mean, leagues are segregating themselves from everybody else. Get with the times, people. Mm-hmm. This isn't 1952. So, this is. You know, 2000 and almost 1951 either. Exactly. Yeah, I said it. It's almost 2012. Get with the times. Almost. We ain't segregated anymore. Yet. We all have color TVs. We're not? We all have color TVs. Okay, I guess you're right. Well, most of us anyway. Well, who doesn't have a color TV? If so. you don't have a color TV in 2011, I don't know what the hell's the matter with you. <laughs> but and anyways. you've got a computer and you're watching this and- you know, exactly. you're stupid. But anyways, people, do what Saint said. Take what we have spoken about in, uh, I guess, whatever sense you want to take it in. But I want you to take it in a very literal sense because it is a very serious plague with the online people thinking that uh, they own one another. Nobody owns anybody anymore, okay? Slave labor does not exist, except for in Mexico. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. And well, I think Haiti, too. Possible. <laughs> and again, I just want to reiterate to Mr. Mexican Pride 13, you're not the super noob that you think you are, okay? The only reason you're as popular as you are is because you try to say you are, but iPoke is, like, way more of a noob than you ever were. So you got nothing on him, homie. Nothing. At all. Xbox noobs got is better than PS3 noobs. Point I don't blank. know, though. I mean, the, the, PS, the PS3 oh. guys are pretty bad. I mean, you know, when I play SmackDown Online on the PS3, it gets pretty bad. Not as bad as the 360 uh, side, though. Yeah. 360 uh, got it. Exactly. Exactly. And, and oh, and unbiased, unbiased opinion on the SmackDown games, just real quick. They almost look identical, except it looks much smoother on the 360 compared to what everybody else thinks. It looks way, way smoother. The game plays more fluid. You know, it's not, like, I'm not saying that the, P- the PlayStation Network is laggy, but that shit is laggy, son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it, but I just said it, okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hypocritical. But all right, people. Yeah. We're pushing 45 minutes, and I'm going to put this whole thing up, so. <laughs> but yeah, take take what we have yeah. said and let it boil in your in your in your brains. Make sure to comment. You don't have to like the video or subscribe. I just want you to comment. And I also want to give a big shout out before, before I stop here. I was streaming Survivor Series last night, and I had a thousand viewers on my channel. How the hell did I get a thousand viewers? Somebody in <laughs> AOW gave out that link stream. One of you gave out the stream. I'm going to find out who it was. But then I finished out <laughs> streaming the show like on a private stream, and I still ended up with like 100 people in it, which was, which was cool. You know, I, I might do that, maybe, and charge everybody, like, a dollar a view. I'll make some money. <laughs> then they're just going to go somewhere else. Well, <laughs> they could get a guaranteed stream that won't go offline. I guess. I guess, yeah. Exactly. But all right, peeps. I, I'm Die Hard. He is the guru of swag. Little Saint. Yeah, that yeah, guy. Yeah, that's my name, too. <laughs> He's that guy. That I'm going to change it. that. No, I'm not going to change that. <laughs> He's the guy that did the, the King of the Ring tournament on the 360. He's the guy that's blowing it up in ROV. He's he's that guy. So uh, And I'll, I'll link ROV's yeah. channel in uh, the description as well, just so you can check out Little Saints. Pure domination. All right, so have a good one, yeah, everybody. Pure. Undefeated.